All right, so you've watched the unboxing, you've done the first 10 things to do. Now it's time to become the ultimate master of the Galaxy S20 Ultra and, you know, the Galaxy S20 line in general. I am Tim for Droid Life, and I will be your Sherpa on the journey up the Galaxy S20 Ultra Mountain. Uh, we've got a ton of tips and tricks to show you, of course, just like every other year, Samsung has built in a ton of stuff into this phone and One UI. So let's go ahead, get right into it. This is our tips and tricks for the Galaxy S20 Ultra. All right, so diving right in, the first thing I wanna talk about is how we can make Samsung's Galaxy S20 Ultra, this, this monster, uh, make it a bit more googly. And no offense to Samsung and Samsung fans, but me personally, you know, coming from a, a, you know, a love and a fondness for Pixel devices, there's a few things that Samsung does that doesn't make it easy for a Google user. So the first thing I want to talk about is setting the Chrome browser as your default instead of the Samsung internet app. Again, no knock on the Samsung internet app fans. Um, the quickest way to do that, of course, is to dive straight into the settings menu and just type default and default apps. And if you go in there, you'll see the first thing, or you could even just type default. You're gonna t uh, tap on that and browser app. So out of the box is going to be Samsung internet. And me personally being a, a googly guy, at least just a Chrome user, you know, everything is synced to Chrome. It just makes my life easier. Boom, default browser app set to Chrome. It's as easy as that. Um, the, and of course, you know, you can do that for anything else. If you have a different phone dialer app or assistant app or, or whatever, your SMS app, you can do all that. But, but my main thing is Chrome and getting rid of Samsung Internet. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is Samsung Pass and Autofill. So just like uh, Chrome, everything I have in my Google account is synced up with Google's Autofill service. So again, you can just go right in from the settings menu, just search for it because you can just get lost in these settings menus for One UI. Just type in autofill service. It's gonna be under general management and then language and input. Um, the way Samsung kind of hides these things is really kind of frustrating for me. I mean, it might not seem hidden, but it is. It's kind of hard to find autofill. So instead, just type it in, autofill service. It's right here down in the middle. Thankfully, it highlights it for you autofill service you're going to tap on it again it comes with autofill with samsung pass if you've been using Sam samsung devices for quite some time you may have that stuff you know those credentials saved inside your samsung pass account but if you're like me either coming from another type of device or a google device it's easier just to use G google autofill that way when you open twitter for the first time or instagram or chrome or whatever anything uh, on your account that's saved to that Google account is going to be pulled right into here into that autofill. So when you're setting up the device, and hopefully Kellen maybe went over this in the first 10 things to do, just autofill service, Google, default, be done with it. Uh, next thing I want to talk about, of course, this phone has a ton of specs, a ton of RAM, so why not take full advantage of that? It does have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, so performance is something that, that I want. You know, I want my $1,400 phone with all the high-end specs to behave like a $1,400 phone with all the high-end specs. So in order to do that, uh, just head into your settings account or just your settings under device care and then under battery. You're actually going to see this uh, whole section for performance uh, or uh, excuse me, power mode under power management here. And out of the box, it comes optimized, which says get the recommended balance of performance and battery life. Not when I have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. I'm sorry, and I want a 120 hertz refresh rate uh, with full HD um, since I can't use it with quad HD. So I go high performance, and when you're doing that, uh, you can toggle a few things like the brightness and the screen resolution, uh, but when you apply that, you'll actually see here, I'll show you here, optimized turning on. So the screen resolution gets changed, brightness gets changed, the limit CPU gets uh, throttled down to 70%, uh, it messes with your always on display, does all that. So I don't want any of that. I want high performance. I, I don't need it to mess with my screen brightness or anything. I, and I also don't want it to mess with my full HD plus because I want 120 hertz refresh rate. So I'm on high performance mode, I hit apply, it's turning on. All right, it's going to bump up my uh, CPU speed all the way up to, you know, it's going to uncap that up to 100%. It's going to turn off any restrictions for background data. It's basically going to give me uh, the, the fastest phone possible. And and that's what I want, for, again, from a $1,400 phone. Excuse me, Samsung. 
Uh, next thing I want to talk real quickly. This might sound stupid uh, to some of you, but for me, uh, I enjoy fart sounds. I, I grew up on The Simpsons and Family Guy, so I just think farts are funny. Uh, I know that's going to sound ridiculous. Anyway, I recommend you apply the fart notification sound that comes built in, pre-installed with the Galaxy S20 Ultra and I assume the whole Galaxy S20 line. So under notification sound, you'll hear under the fun category, it's just called squeeze. I don't know why it's called squeeze because it's clearly a fart. Uh, let's see if you're gonna be able to hear this. Nope, so hold on, let me turn off here. Um, media, notification, oh, ringtone, there we go. Turn that up all the way maybe. Okay, hold on. Let me turn off do not disturb. There we go. All right, let me let me get this real close for you. Okay, so just imagine you're having a conversation with your loved one, uh, a notification comes in, and boom, you've got this farting sound coming. I have dogs, so I like to blame any farts that happen. I blame that on the dogs. Now with the phone, I can just say, oh, that was the phone, blah, blah, blah. I know, again, this is probably stupid, but it's just really funny. And so that's one of my little tips and tricks for you is just apply that notification fart sound. Um, while we're in sounds and vibration, of course, I can talk about something a bit more serious. And under sound quality and effects, uh, let's talk about Dolby Atmos. So I enjoy listening to music, whether it be on the external speakers or through my Galaxy Buds Plus. Um, when you apply the Dolby Atmos out of the box, I think it comes disabled. So I enable that and then I just go with music. I don't watch a ton of movies on my phone. Of course, you can auto it uh, and that's fine. Or voice, if you're doing a lot of say voice work with the phone, you're recording things or listening to a lot of spoken word like podcasts. That's great. I listen to a lot of music. So I just put on music. It says make all your music sound richer, fuller and more balanced. Uh, I think it actually does that quite well. And when you're toggling it on and off, when you're listening to music, um, it's very noticeable. Uh, same thing goes for gaming. I don't do a ton of gaming, or at least like kind of hardcore gaming. I play solitaire and traffics and a bunch of like little titles. Um, so nothing too intense. Uh, but of course, so you can do that for gaming as well. Um, equalizer, I just have it set to rock. Of course, if you if you rock out to jazz or classical or pop or whatever, that's fine. You can customize. This looks like a ten, ten band EQ. So go ahead and customize that however you want. But I just set it to rock. It's going to up those highs and up those lows, kind of decrease the mids just a little bit. So that's how I do it. And uh, yeah, uh, definitely recommend just to go into the sound settings and you can play with all that stuff, the system vibrations and all that. Obviously, this would not be a awesome Galaxy S20 Ultra tips and tricks thing if we didn't talk about the display. This massive 6.9 inch WQHD Plus display that's pushing a ton of pixels. Although it is a bit limited when you uh, enable the 120 hertz refresh rate. Uh, so there are a few settings inside the display section here I want to go over. Of course, you can choose between light and mode, <laughs> light mode and dark mode. Um, that's something you're going to do when you're initially setting up the device. Uh, but I want to talk about the, so the motion smoothness. Again, so when you're enabling either the 60 hertz or the 120 hertz, out of the box, I think this device comes with the 120 hertz enabled. Uh, which is great, obviously. 5,000 milliamp hour battery, the processor, all this stuff. I mean, so you're going to want to enjoy this device. And that's one of the marquee features, right? Is this mo motion smoothness. So go ahead, have that enabled. Just know that you will be throttled down or I guess kind of capped to full HD uh, resolution. And when you go to apply that, it's going to let you know, uh, hey, your screen resolution is going to go down, which is just fine. So motion smoothness, 120 hertz, apply it. You're on full HD, but I don't know, you know, I still, I don't really watch a lot of say 4K or QHD content on my device, so it's totally fine for me. Uh, while you're in the display section, let's go over blue light filter. Uh, again, one of those things that should be covered in the first uh, 10 things to do with the device. Uh, but the blue light filter, great for when you're in bed or at night sitting on the couch, uh, having that automatically toggle on via a schedule. And I have mine on a custom schedule. You can have it set to sunrise, sunset, and it uses the device's location information uh, to make that happen. Uh, and then of course, you can just manually toggle it, on, toggle it on and off. And you can also do that via the, uh, the settings up here as well. Well. So I just have it set on a custom schedule. Highly recommend you do the same thing. Uh, also under display, I want to talk about edge screen. 
So edge screen is cool. I do not want to talk about edge panels because I think those just need to go away. You can enable them here if you really want to. It's the things you sli uh, slide out. You can get a compass or contacts or whatever. I'm not here to talk about that because I don't use them personally. I don't think really anyone should. They just seem kind of like a waste of space. That's just my opinion. But edge lighting is very cool. So edge lighting, we're going to make sure that's toggled on. And you can actually customize this really well and I love it so first thing of course you can do the uh, the lighting style but I want to talk about the apps that you can enable for that first so things like hangouts things I get a lot of notifications from hangouts messages snapchat um, there's a few others play store gmail I'm sure is enabled Twitter Google voice so these are the things that I want to have um, pop up with my edge lighting I want that cool effect um, so under the lighting style then we can actually customize what type of effect is going on so there's a glitter a multicolor a glow and all these things look rather cool like I don't know if you can see too well but then I get this nice effect up here at the top I can have the glitter with a multicolor go all the way around the display um, I can get sort of an echo vibe going on from the sides um, hard to see probably in this lighting but so you can choose your effect. I have it on glow because I think that looks uh, pretty sweet. It kind of glows all the way the, around the side of the device. You can choose the color. Um, you can set colors for different applications. So for when I have Gmail coming in, it's red, Hangouts green, and that's all automatic. I didn't have to do anything like that. Um, it's taken right from the uh, application icon itself. So very nice little touch. Um, advanced you can uh, crank up the transparency or low the width of it I have that set to high because I really want to see that thing and the duration you can change the duration if you want it to not last a long time or not at all so definitely something to uh, take a look at and that is it for the display section all right next let's go over the lock screen so diving straight back into the settings here right under lock screen you can't miss it we're going to go lock screen and then the first thing I want to go over are the notifications so out of the box this is somewhat confusing and I know Kellen and myself were, were personally very confused by it back in the day uh, but to get notifications to show up on your lock screen or at least uh, uh, as well as the always on display uh, you're going to have to toggle them on here and then this actually gives you a preview of what it's going to look like uh, but so out of the box it's going to be icons only and so instead of having to tap on that or unlock your phone to see what's going on I need details and I want to be able to expand those notifications and read them from the lock screen so details you don't need a high content transparency uh, you don't want that to be too low I guess it depends on your wallpaper or what you uh, what you think is aesthetically pleasing I have mine set to low auto reverse text color because I use a lot of darkness uh, so I need that white uh, text on the lock screen um, and then also notifications to show uh, you can swap between alert and silent notifications or just alert notifications only uh, but then also so all the way down here at the bottom you've got show on always on display so I want those notifications to pop up you know every time I'm looking at the device so uh, lock screen notifications make sure those are enabled make sure you got details set on that way you can see exactly what's happening on your device when it's coming in all that good stuff Smart lock, uh, something we always talk about in our first 10 things to do. Um, trusted places, so whenever you're at home, the phone will automatically lock on you, as well as trusted devices. So when my Galaxy Buds are connected via Bluetooth, the phone will stay unlocked. Uh, just a nice little, little thing that I like to do. Um, the always on display a ton of customization things that you can do inside of there so when it's on the screen is off and you kind of get that uh, that clock going there that's always on display and you can customize that quite a bit um, there is the clock style right there down right towards the middle um, I've got this kind of funky looking thing going on over here and you can access additional kind of clock styles uh, right from that uh, that that face right there that clock face um, of course there are plenty to choose from out of the box there's plenty of them I like that you can change the color I've got a multicolor thing going on this aesthetic going on it all looks cool uh, if you want red that's fine just click done and then when you go back to your uh, always on display next time it'll be there so uh, very nice for always on display uh, and then also there's another thing for always on display that I want to kind of go over here let me just dive right back in lock screen always on display um, when you're 
inside that settings menu here at the bottom and and again this is sort of like the weird thing that samsung does a setting for always on display is not in the section for always on display so here at the bottom show fingerprint icon yes so always on display i want that fingerprint to be shown um show icon when screen is off always on display tap to show never so you can determine when the fingerprint is shown or not when with the always on display i want it there that way when i just go up to the device i put my finger there and boom it unlocks that makes the most sense to me i don't know why that setting is not under the always on display settings menu but whatever that's very samsung that's very cool so getting out of always on display make sure you customize it it looks good um shortcuts so the shortcuts on the lock screen would be these things so you've got a shortcut for camera shortcut for flashlight um dive right in here so shortcuts you can customize that uh i have i stick with the camera one and of course out of the box it comes with the phone and i don't really use the phone all too much so i have got the flashlight uh so when i'm kind of stumbling around in the dark trying to pick up dog poop sorry tmi um, I can just go ahead and flick that open and get my flashlight. Of course, you can set any app you want if you play a lot of blackjack or need Google Drive constantly. You can set any application you want. So out of there, I'll just give you a, a brief little little showcase here. When I'm on the lock screen, I can just swipe up and I've got my, my flash going. Swipe up again, turns it off. It's really beautiful. And again, get to the camera. Uh, I love shortcuts from the lock screen. So definitely check out shortcuts, customize them. You'll love it. All right, next up, got to talk advanced features. So in settings menu, uh, we're just going to go, we're going to scroll down, we're going to look for, boom, advanced features. Now, advanced features on these Samsung devices could probably be its own 20-minute video. I'm going to try not to do that for you. There's three things inside advanced features I want to go over. That side key, uh, which allows you to go over the gesture. So let's let's just talk about that first. So for the side key, I like there to be the double press functionality to dive into the camera. That's what it is out of the box. When you double click it, it goes straight to the camera. That's what I want. That's what I like. Um, now I need to, oh boy. Sometimes gestures can be a real pain. Uh, I don't need it to open Bixby, but you can also have it open up another app. And of course, you can choose whatever app you want. Say if you want it to open up Hangouts, it can open up Hangouts. Um, but being able to get into the uh, camera quickly is very nice. And of course, that works even when the device is on its you know shutdown or kind of lockdown mode. You give it that double click and it's going to open up the... Well, it was going to open up the camera. Oh, maybe because it's unlocked? Oh, because I have it set to open up an app. Please excuse me. I'm silly. So when it's locked, double click. Boom. There we go. Camera. I thought I was going crazy there for a second. Uh, diving back right back into the advanced features side key. Okay. Uh, so... Obviously, uh, Samsung got rid of the Bixby button, sort of a weird thing, so instead they had a Wake Bixby out of the box. Um, so when you long press, this menu wouldn't come up. They would they would then redirect you uh, to this new software power off button. So when your phone you know, is not responding properly or something like that, which thankfully doesn't happen too much in 2020 with these devices, uh, you'd be just have to long press and wait for the device to power off. I'm not a huge fan of that. So I would much rather press and hold to access that power off menu. And then of course, from the power off menu on the bottom here, you've got side key settings. So uh, just kind of a weird thing that Samsung kind of keeps changing that doesn't need to be changed, but whatever, at least they give you some options for the double click and all that, that that's highly appreciated. Uh, moving on, I wanna talk about smart pop-up view. It's right here in the middle. So smart pop-up view, when you get certain notifications that come in, um, you can have a chat bubble basically appear. And we've talked about chat bubbles for quite some time, thanks to Facebook, and now Android 11 is going to have those uh, kind of baked in. Um, so let's say we want the smart pop-up view. So whenever a Hangouts comes in, I'm going to get a little chat bubble. So let's see that work. I think I'll have to turn off Do Not Disturb. We'll dive right into here go back go into my own little chat all right and i'm going to say hi tim oh hi rim so as you can see this little chat uh chat bubble comes up 
and I can click on that and boom so now I don't have to dedicate my entire screen to whatever is happening I can just quickly respond to that this is a completely usable window uh, and I can access everything from it um, I can just say hi uh, and then send that back there's also settings for the pop-up window which is nice so from that top little button I can change the transparency or the um, the opacity I guess that would be if I uh, want it to be solid uh, I can do that if I want to still do other things and also kind of see what's going on with that app I can lower uh, that quite a bit um, the other buttons of course you can minimize it back to a bubble and then just leave that there and that won't ever go anywhere unless you uh, make it go away um, you can expand it of course to the full window and then you can just dismiss it completely which is nice um, so smart pop-up view if you have a lot of different types of like messaging apps that you use um, that's actually something quite nice I, I really like it for hangouts in certain instances if I'm kind of uh, if I'm outside and kind of out and about and I need to quickly access something and I don't need to pop up the whole window so good to know uh, we gotta dive right back into advanced features there's always so many things under there so smart pop-up view gotta talk about one-handed mode this again is a large device 6.9 inches kind of hard to use with one hand uh, so under one-handed mode I go with the gesture um, out of the box I believe it's disabled so boom I enable it out of the box and then so what you do with the gesture and this is of course the gesture is only accessible if you're using system gestures and not the software navigation buttons you swipe down in the center of the bottom edge of the screen so let me try and give you an example here Ah yes, boom, I love it when things work the first time. So you swipe down right from the middle, kind of right where the Samsung Pay kind of logo is, and boom, now you've got your full full access to your device, everything works as usual, I can do everything I need my phone to do, except I can do it all with one hand. It's actually quite beautiful. Um, and if you need to get out of that, you just tap it uh, on the uh, blank side of the display. And then also, if let's say you're left-handed, you can just use that little arrow and boom now you've got left thumb access and boom it's awesome you can also hit that settings menu and get right back into the setting controls for one hand in mode so it's it's that easy I really quite like it uh, especially when devices are getting larger and larger so one handed mode check it out alright let's talk a bit more about customization specifically uh, the home screen customization so thankfully it's quite easy uh, when you're just using the one UI launcher uh, don't ask Kellen he's already probably off of it and using Nova launcher uh, just because I, I just don't think he likes one UI and that's totally fine uh, but of course so if you long press when you're on the home screen you can access your wallpaper settings themes etc widgets dive into home screen settings play with this stuff make the phone feel like your own if you want a 5x5 home screen grid you can do that five by six all the way down to four by five uh, app screen grid I use five by five but of course if you want uh, if you want five by six so be it you know play with it you know make the phone however you want it to be uh, you can have a dedicated apps home button or like an apps button app drawer button which you press kind of like back in the day of Android or you can just swipe up this is where you can access your app icon badges um, if you want numbers or dots on your apps to show you when notifications are coming in for that particular app you can do that um, there's just a ton of stuff you can do for the home screen uh, add apps to home screen so when apps are downloaded from the uh, from Google Play you can actually change um, it, you know if those apps are automatically added to your home screen and all that so I like to disable that personally so a lot of good settings in here to check out uh, definitely just dive in there spend five minutes kind of you know tweak the device however you want it to be tweaked and that's the beauty of Android another one of those things that Samsung does that might upset uh, a few of you is kind of limit the way apps behave in the background so for things like Gmail that have pushes a lot of notifications for some of you uh, those notifications can sometimes get uh, obstructed by Samsung's own kind of app monitoring system uh, so sometimes if you have Gmail notifications that you know should be coming in and they don't pop up it's because Samsung and one UI is actually limiting those notifications 
uh, via their battery optimization settings. So to stop that and to make sure that apps are coming in the way you need it, um, I just go straight into the settings menu here. I just look for Gmail and then under app info. So of course you can go all the way to the apps so, sort of dedicated section and then go under Gmail. Uh, but it's easy just to type in Gmail. Uh, and then under battery, and then right here you're going to see optimize battery usage. And you want to make sure it's not optimized. So you can go into there and under Gmail and just make sure that that is not toggled. So out of the box, that will be toggled, uh, if I'm not mistaken. At least it was for me and it has been on every other Samsung device I've used recently. So untoggle that and make sure uh, that you know the, the Gmail app or any app that you expect. I have a banking app um, that shows every time I do a transaction, I get a notification for the amount. Uh, and I want to make sure that I'm getting those notifications. Uh, so make sure that the optimized battery usage is not enabled on apps like Gmail or your banking apps or anything that you need to make sure you get notifications. Boom, as soon as they come in, you get them. Uh, I really dislike that phones do that. I get that they want to save people battery life and all that, but there's better ways of going about that. So last one, and I don't even have to... Uh, <laughs> go into the settings menu for this one at least for this section uh download gboard uh i think the samsung keyboard has gotten a lot better of course it's got swipe functionality and all that but i just like having gboard having google's own keyboard um you know of course there's different themes you can use for it um this is gboard right here uh you can dive into the settings here you can go you can play with themes you can enable disable glide typing you can change up voice typing settings you can look at the preferences you can set a number row one-handed mode height emoji all the good stuff so just download download gboard from google play it's a free download it doesn't cost any money it's just a nice little tip uh moving on so last part here is the camera section and the camera section obviously is very important when you're talking about a device such as this so we'll head right here into the photo here uh, boom so let's say we're taking a nice lovely photo uh, there's a few so the first stuff let's just dive right into the settings here scene optimizer uh, I take that off so what scene optimizer is for the uninitiated here um, so the rear camera is able to choose between different modes and apply them to the best one that suits any given situation. So let's say you're taking a picture of food or taking a picture of shoes or landscape, whatever. Um, the phone is actually going to manually select, you know, what it's doing, the settings based on that particular scene. I, myself, not wanting any of that, I want to be in full control of the pictures I'm taking. I don't need uh, bokeh effects automatically applied or anything like that. Like I can do all that myself. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of you who, who would rather prefer the phone just do everything for you. That's totally fine. You can leave scene optimizer enabled. Me, personally, I don't need Bixby uh, automatically optimizing my shots for a scene. That's just me personally so i use uh, scene optimizer off um underneath that shot suggestions this helps you line up certain things you'll see a dot on it i don't need that either maybe some people do to keep their photo photo straight or what uh, what have you uh, i just disable that i don't need any extra kind of gimmicky ui on top of whatever i got going on um there is a swipe shutter button so this is actually awesome so if we go back here and let's say we, um, so here, well first, let me show you what it does. Swipe shutter button to edge to either create a GIF or take a burst shot. Plenty of people might want to take a burst shot. Personally, I love the idea of being able to take a GIF of something. Here, let me focus in for you. Camera's doing its thing. Oh goodness gracious, come on baby. As I was saying, so you can slide the shutter button or swipe the shutter button towards the towards the edge now to create a gif when you have that applied so let's say this is a moving object right here you just slide that over and now you can make a gif and it's taking shots and it's going to create a little a little gif or a gif depending on however you do it so now i've got a sweet little gif or a gif again i don't want to get into into all that i'm not trying to have an argument with people uh, so that's actually a nice little feature if you've got dogs or something or a kid and you want to make a quick little gif 
that's a sweet little thing you swipe it to the side and of course you can still take your burst shot if you want to do that um also moving down here all the way towards the bottom grid lines so i like having a grid line that helps me align my shots that way i don't need to use shot suggestions or anything like that i just use grid lines that way i can kind of line things up with the horizon or whatever i need to do um that's just how i do it uh right below that is shooting methods uh so i i like to use the voice control feature um especially in things for like a night shot or when you're uh handling this with this 100x zoom so because any type of vibration when you hit that shutter button that's going to say jiggle a little something and you might lose focus whatever um it's nice just to be able to, to say certain words like smile or cheese or capture or shoot record video etc so i'll give you a little example here we'll just go let's say we'll do a little selfie like uh cheese cheese oh god jeez there we go jeez jeez goodness gracious anyway so being able to say or tell the phone that you want to take a picture is just a nice little handy dandy uh handy dandy tip um also under the shooting methods you can show palm so if i don't want to say anything at all but as i still want to take a selfie i can just show the phone my palm it saw my palm it recognized that you could see the yellow square we'll do it again boom so it saw the palm it saw that I was ready to take a selfie and that's just a, a nice little thing especially if you have the phone set up on a tripod or what have you just a nice little thing to do um, so down here let's talk about these modes uh, comes uh, out of the box with the photo video night that's all fine and dandy but there's a lot more so if you go over here to the more section you'll see that there's modes for panorama food live focus live focus video pro video etc etc you can actually uh, edit all of these you can just use that little square uh, use the little pencil drag and drop if you don't want night mode or pro mode uh, you can just simply take those and what do you do yep you long press on them and then you drag them back up into here um, I like being able to quickly access the night mode and the pro mode so you just go into there save it and boom then these are all accessible right from there so uh, a lot of stuff uh, in the camera of course you can play with the 108 megapixel all that good stuff there's actually so many more things I could probably talk about that it would be another 30 minutes of me talking and rambling but you know what go out there Get the S20 Ultra, have some fun with it, play with your phone, uh, you know, make it your own, set a wallpaper, I don't care. Uh, there's a lot of fun stuff, and actually, you know, being able to dive into these settings menu and kind of even learn myself some of these, like playing with edge screen, uh, making sure my notifications look good on the lock screen, like, these are all pretty important, at least for me, you know, when you're talking about making the $1,400 phone your own, so... Again, there's plenty of other stuff. If you have your own little tips and tricks, feel free to shoot them down in the comments. We'll give them a little thumbs up if we like them. And yeah, if you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, feel free to shoot them down below. And until then, we are Droid Life. Peace.